Yo, what is Bitcoin? In a digital world, we always have to figure out what the truth is, from email to social media to money. Well, that's what Bitcoin set out to do, and its backbone, the blockchain. I'm Risky Rockmot, Data Visualizer. I help policymakers on Capitol Hill translate data into insights. By night, I'm a hip hop dancer, and we're jumping into the world of blockchain. Today's episode, we're in Montana at one of the largest data centers in the United States in the Northwest. We're going to talk about blockchain, mining, how to get that operation started, what value comes out of it, and all the challenges that come with it. Here we go. a computer right now literally like we shrunk down and we're walking through a computer so uh how many units are in the building right now i think we're currently around 12,000 um yeah, we've had up to 13,000 wow but, uh, most people are just curious about how does mining even work and how is how can you even get profit out of that what's the business model behind that so basically all of our equipment here uh is giving hash rate uh, to the Bitcoin network or whatever cryptocurrency network that we're doing. And in order to do that, you get paid back out in Bitcoin. So basically Bitcoin is a network that is, we're verifying transactions on the network, which in turn is also securing the network. And in return, we get Bitcoin as payment for those, uh, for doing that service. Right. Uh, and so basically, we are we are reimbursed in cryptocurrency. Yeah, and then at some point we liquidate that cryptocurrency into USD. We pay all of our bills in USD. We, yeah, we receive paychecks and pay all our employees in USD. Yeah, so, uh, and that has to be done usually through an exchange or an OTC. Uh, and at the same time, we want to try to hold on to some because we believe in the long term future. But we have to have something in order to cover our expenses. Right. So uh, at some point we have to liquidate some of what we. Or, right. Um, as far as we have to To understand Bitcoin, we have to understand the blockchain. The blockchain is a decentralized record keeping protocol. Let's say 10 people use one bank. They all trust that bank to give them the right information. The idea of the blockchain instead is that those 10 people do each other's accounting and publish that information every few minutes onto a block of data. Each block is linked to the one before it, like a chain, hence the blockchain. And what's important to note here is that we don't have to rely on one bank. If someone lies or makes a mistake, the network can verify what's right and what's wrong and form a consensus around the truth. Only because Bitcoin was framed as digital gold, the term mining was used to describe how new Bitcoins were made. But to understand mining more fully, here's how you should think about it. There are two functions, one, doing work, and two, getting rewarded. And because blockchain depends on a decentralized network, there's work to be done to publish the blocks of data, like setting up a computer and using electricity. In order to incentivize that work, people have to get rewarded. In Bitcoin specifically, miners are rewarded with new Bitcoin. Mining is blockchain security blockchain security service. So every computational cycle that a server, millions of servers now on the mining network provide to the Bitcoin Core network and the Bitcoin Cash network and, and other networks is incremental security to that database so that it can't be hacked, so that people can't steal from it. So all of this other stuff in the ecosystem, all of these other great software companies and these other great use cases can be allowed you know, to flourish and grow and even exist because in the absence of the secure foundation, none of that stuff would be possible. That's what I feel, you know, the essential contribution that mining makes. Cool. So 
Could you paint the picture of what the blockchain ecosystem looks like? The current blockchain ecosystem is pretty sweeping and far-reaching. You know, there are blockchain initiatives on probably every country of the planet right now, with a lot of the focus being on the technical aspects of blockchain database and the usage. Um, I like to come at things from a more product-centric focus. Um, you know, what are some useful products and use cases that we can <clears throat> market to? Uh, segments of our target addressable market of tech savvy, you know, people that want to try to use new forms of money, you know, focus on cryptocurrencies in particular, which is what Hyperblock is, you know, exclusively focused on are the cryptocurrency use cases which within the blockchain ecosystem. Um, you know, you mentioned a lot about uh, responsibility, community, and stewardship. Um, things that are, aren't often talked about when we th think about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies where you know a lot of people are on the developer side or the hacker side or you know basically talking about a lot of technical requirements and specifications give us a give us a, an understanding of your your outlook on what community and responsibility means to you for this community I see sort of two primary categories for responsibility community and stewardship one is sort of a literal uh, sense of, of those terms and that relates to the obligations or you know the self-imposed expectations that we have of our data center operations so those data centers are located in real communities where people live and children go to school and so we have we have certain obligation to be good citizens when we first built this place uh, it heated up a lot quicker than what anybody had expected it was going to, and that required putting rooftop fans uh, up there so we could exhaust the heat out of Yeah. Uh, what we found is as we added those, and uh, the noise that came from them started to uh, bother a lot of the uh, people in the area here. Um, so we started getting a lot of pushback from the community about sure. the noise problems. So what we did at that point uh, is we decided to start looking at how we could try to fix that problem. Now, yeah. we're zoned industrial out here, so we were never breaking any laws. We were up to all codes. We, yeah. weren't, we weren't doing anything wrong other than we'd created a, a sound issue that people didn't like, and so we wanted to be good neighbors. And so at that point, we started working at what can we do to take care of this problem or what exactly is the problem. And so we hired a acoustical engineer to come out. He ran all sorts of sound samples and tests and everything and determined that it wasn't actually, it wasn't actually the sound level, but it was the, there were frequencies that were very annoying to the human ear yeah. uh, that were coming out. And uh, at that point, we determined what the problem was and we started doing a bunch of research and development with yeah. Acme fans trying to find a fan blade that could still move the same amount of air that we needed to be moved, yeah. but reduce those frequencies that were bothering people. Um, so it was a really long, drawn out process, which was difficult for the community because they felt like nothing was happening and that we weren't doing anything about it. Uh, but we really were, yeah. and uh, we ended up coming up with a fan blade, and we ran a test sample of 10 of them that we put up on the roof, and we tested those those blades, and they did make a difference. Yeah. So at that time, since we determined the test batch was successful, let's go ahead and move forward with replacing all of the rooftop blades, sure. um, at which point we did, and we got great feedback from the community. Uh, they said that they, they don't hear it anymore. And it's not that there's not sound, there's still sound, but yeah. it's not that annoying sound. Now the second, uh, you know, stewardship or, or community or responsibility sort of category that I see is for Bitcoin or for whatever cryptocurrency, you know, we're focused on um, and that community globally, which isn't, you know, geographically focused, but sort of distributed around the world. And it consists of, um, instead of citizens of a given town or a county, it's people that have purchased Bitcoin, people that have purchased Bitcoin Ethereum, Bitcoin Core, Bitcoin Cash. We have responsibility to them as the stewards, uh, the custodians of the network that they're relying on for this new form of money that they want to start experimenting with, that they want to learn about, that they want to 
you know, rely on our assertions and our promises for what it offers to them. They want us to deliver on those promises. So I'll give you a case in point. Um, Bitcoin was promoted to the world as a new form of money that offered three primary things. The first thing is a way to transfer value over the internet um, quickly, uh, easily, and inexpensively, very inexpensively, relative to the pre-existing you know, means with which you could do that. And um, there was a great deal of technical squabbling, a civil war even, if you will, that raged with increasing volume and turbulence starting in maybe 2014 and reached a crescendo in um, 2017, August of 2017, when the Bitcoin network split into Bitcoin Core and Bitcoin Cash over this sort of um, technical detail related to whether Bitcoin could deliver on the promises that I just described. Mm -hmm. And one group felt that there was one technical solution that would be ready sometime in the future that would deliver on that promise. And the second group felt that there was something that could be changed immediately to deliver on that promise. And what happened was we launched Bitcoin Cash mm -hmm. to deliver on the promise today so that transactions could remain fast and easy and inexpensive. Um, that was in August of 2017. And then on the Bitcoin Core network in the months that followed, as more and more and more of the mainstream population around the world uh, became aware of and interested in testing out Bitcoin, they used Bitcoin Core. Bitcoin Core reached its transaction throughput capacity, and so transactions ceased to be inexpensive. They ceased to be fast. They ceased to be easy. And we, as, a, in, as an industry, as a group of entrepreneurs and promoters for our product, we're all really working for the same company here. You know, it's like this hypothetical conceptual company called Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. You know, my 10 year old daughter <laughs> kind of funnily tells people that I'm the CEO of Bitcoin. <laughs> but I'm sure there's 10 year old daughters <laughs> that are, you know, the daughters of all the other yeah. business people and entrepreneurs yeah. in this industry that are saying the same thing. Yeah. And it, there's truth to that. We really have that kind of responsibility to the world. Almost immediately after Bitcoin came Litecoin and other cryptocurrencies. A money revolution had started. But then developers began to ask, what if we could put more than just the numbers and figures on the blockchain, but data, identities, and applications? Till next time.